anyway, back to more serious things. Um, <laughs> so before Tiny Fish, uh, you were in Gazpacho Hammer, I believe. Um, oh, the Hammers. One? Yeah, they were very good. One of the things that we had on, on, with with that band is that we all had the same kind of dress on on stage. It was it was a, a pink suit with flared bottoms, flared I, bell ends. I remember seeing um, the pictures. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, cu- and a cu- good Cuban heel was very very important with those guys. Oh, I remember them. Yeah, yeah, and that was after you were one of the Nigel Quartet. The big joke uh, being you were the only one not called Nigel. Exactly. Yeah, they, they used to get a lot of laughs on stage. That did, um, especially sort of like when we played the mining uh, communities of Wales. Um, that seemed to really strike a chord with them. Yeah, because you were you were playing the gigs in Wales. But then that was the same time that your concurrent band, the Urban Shave Conundrum, had been banned from Wales. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, and it was that was down to a, a very dodgy press release that was uh, that was uh, put out by our, the, the the previous label that I'd been signed to, which was called um, Wetter Than Wet. And then before that, you were playing bass for uh, Fartplex Five Thousand. <sighs> Well, I, you say play bass, but for Farplex 5000, they were really an electronic band um, in the sort of like in the strictest tradition of sort of like craft work meets the Wurzels. Yeah. And, and they were they were trying to sort of like because I always remember they they uh, the, we had this little thing uh, where we would try to sort of like there would be a very metronomic kind of feeling like this, and then I would say ooh ah ooh ah a mm. ooh ah. Ooh-ah-ra. Mm. And I just could not syncopate the bass with uh, with the ooh ah ra Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I always I always remember sort of like our biggest hit was I am a cipher drinker. Um, I remember that's that good tra- track. Weren't you playing slide guitar for the country band Nine Ways to Fall in Love with a Truck? Was that you? Uh, well, no. That was that was funnily enough. It, Nine Ways was was a was a very interesting band because I I actually managed that band. I wasn't oh, actually in that band, I see. Um, but it was my job to 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 go on stage at at a certain point during the um uh certain point during the the show and shower them all with coal dust. And because of that, uh, because I had to hide behind the slide guitarist, and I think because I of that, a lot of people seem to think that I was the slide guitarist. That but makes I was sense. just there. Oh yeah, I was just there to throw the coal dust over the band. Yeah. So you know, some some bands would go with like glitter or um, um, you know something fun to throw about. Why why had Nine Ways to Fall in Love with a Truck chosen coal dust? Uh, I think it had to do with the bass player's mother, but we never really understood why it was. But he was very insistent upon it. So obviously that was, you know, a short lived success. But it led to pretty sad times with the Doncaster Kazoo Septet, didn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really know what to say about the Doncaster uh, Kazoo uh, Septet, except for the fact that they did. I mean. Take the uh, the music any way you like. Um, they did, as a band, smell wonderful. Really? Yes, they were the best smelling band that I've ever been in. That's interesting because I I remember seeing the uh, the newspaper articles. There was an N- NME article, I think. About, oh um, yes. Um, what yeah. was the headline? Um, uh, sweet smelling disaster, something like that. Yeah, after and, the incident. And, you know, yeah, to be really honest with you, that's a perfect summation of the the septet in that one phrase. Really, um, mm. I I really wanted that band to work. I really, and I and I worked for ages on the on the correct blend of aftershapes between the members of the band. That was going to be our our sort of like our, our angle and our way into the music business. I'd often say to them because prior to that all of them had um, had been in, in in working bands um mostly uh um from the netherlands uh but um and i think i think really at the end of the day when you come from the netherlands the last thing you expect um to to do is 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 wear after shave on stage but i i told them in england you have to have a smell of course there's no other way to get into the top 40 in this country without a smell. 
And a signature smell. It's got to be here. And a signature smell, yes. And so, as a result, I felt that it was the best way forward. But they just their hearts weren't in it. Mm, mm. No, it's so sad how that how that band ended, and, and you, the sole survivor. <laughs>